Well, I'm with Patrick Ferguson, who is head of user experience tech sales at TiVo, which is now part of Xperi. And he's been with the company two and a half years, and he used to be with TDS, which is one of the leading telcos in the US. And today we're talking about the components that you need for a best of breed pay TV platform that's fit for the rest of this decade or streaming decade, as some people might characterize it. So uh, welcome, Patrick. Thank you for having me. Happy to be here. So, I mean, we know we know pay TV operators, they obviously face more competition now, both in terms of attention and money from all the sort of direct to consumer streaming services and existing pod services. I mean, if we if we leave content aside, which is another subject altogether, do you think it's the user experience now that will determine their performance as we move forwards? Yes, absolutely. Yeah. And I, I think that there are some really key differences in the next gen world of, of pay TV um, as folks look toward IP video delivery and aggregation of content into a, a next level and market leading user experience. Um, absolutely. Yes. Yeah. So, I mean, what does a great pay TV operator user experience look like then? I mean, just talk us through sort of, you know, what you need to offer now. Sure. Yeah. Well, I think, you know, first and foremost, we're uh, moving from more of an on-premise model um, where the operators are hands-on uh, and prohibited from being as agile, I think, as, as they would like to be in terms of uh, forward-looking roadmap and um, cadence of feature releases and that type of thing. So moving into an, an all-in cloud-hosted managed environment um, is, is a, a very important component in order to be able to keep up with the trends in the market. Um, you know, within the core, the, the UX itself, there's a big buzzword that we're all uh, hearing or buzz term, I should say, that we're all hearing in, in super aggregation, right? And what does that actually mean? Well, uh, no longer does it, you know, does it is it satisfactory to just to have apps preloaded onto a managed Android TV set-top box, for example, in, in the next gen world, um, where, you know, it's really taking that content and the metadata the enriched metadata uh, from each of those OTT platforms and embedding it within the user experience that you're providing so that uh, the robust search and recommendations engine um, is not only populating high value linear and, and video on demand content that the operators are providing, but also incorporating uh, those, um, those OTT platforms into the search and discovery experience as well. Yeah, I mean, do you think that the pay TV operators have a particularly strong position for that? Because obviously they've got the DVRs as well. So everything could be on their platform in theory. Yes, absolutely. And, you know, it's it's interesting because I think for a long time and, and it's cascaded in different parts of the world, right? But in, in, for a long time, folks really viewed OTT as almost a competitive threat. You know, the cord cutting and the notion of that type of uh, um, segment of the pay TV world, um, it was very black and white. You either were a cord cutter or you were a pay TV customer. And now with the advancement of these platforms that incorporate these OTT platforms, these, these OTT providers and all the content associated, it's not so much uh, competition, you know, it really is is embracing the fact that they are gonna be there, that the folks are, are wanting to view content and source content on a multitude of devices from uh, not just the, again, the high value content that the operators are providing, but from these OTT sources. So embracing those trends and giving folks a one-stop shop, so to speak, uh, in, in their user experience so that they are providing that much more value, not just in the content they're providing, but what they're aggregating and putting at the fingertips of their customers. That's, that's incredibly important. And, and folks do have the, uh, you know, do have the, or can be in the driver's seat as far as that's concerned. Okay, and on your on your solution, can you integrate apps, you know, obviously Netflix, Amazon, or even the local broadcaster apps, if I was an operator? Yes, yeah. So TiVo has some very uh, strong relationships um, with um, Netflix, Amazon, uh, other global OTT providers, and also with Google uh, and the managed Android TV solution that we provide. So the suite of products that we have is is we do allow for that managed experience in the Android TV world. And then across universal experience across unmanaged streamers and mobile as well. And what we're able to do with our relationships with some of those big OTT providers is, is provide the technology gateway uh, for operators to be able to have that content uh, within their search and discovery experience. And if there are other uh, more regionalized OTT apps, um, as we've found, as we've continued to cascade this user experience product of ours across the world, um, that there are you know, ab absolutely examples of regional uh, players that we want to have incorporated into the platform and the technology that we have allows for 
uh, the right type of specifications to be provided and then the content to be ingested and, and metadata enriched and incorporated into the discovery experience. Yes. Yeah. Okay, and beyond super aggregation, I mean, what else do we need to think about? Because we hear quite a lot about personalization. I mean, there's often not enough detail around that, but talk us through what else we need. Yeah, so I, you hit it right on the head. I think another huge component um, as we look at the forward looking video world is personalizing the experience. So users want to be able to feel as though, um, you know, when they sit down and want and watch TV, whether, whether it be on a, on a big screen or on a device, um, they want to feel as though the content is being surfaced based on their own behavior that's personalizing, almost customized for them, right? So having uh, no longer is just a standard recommendations engine carousel uh, gonna cut it, right? The, the folks are expecting there to be an experience that allows for them to, uh, you know, in, in multiple different areas of the user experience, have content that surface that is based on their own behavior, their own viewing habits, um, and really customized for them, um, you know, and it can be a multitude of factors, whether it be the time of day, this is what they typically sit down and watch the news, right? Or it's early in the morning and the kids are on watching cartoons or whatever the, whatever the case may be is the experience is tailored toward uh, who we believe as that, as the provider of that, of that recommendations engine, who we believe is watching and, um, and what the content is that, that we feel like they're going to want to see. Yeah. And what about voice? I mean, that's another sort of, it's not buzz term. I mean, it's a sort of a key, a key sort of new feature. Um, I mean, you know, standard voice, you, you talk about conversational kind of interaction rather than voice. I mean, tell us what that means. Yeah, it's, it's another feature that's become really prominent in terms of how folks are beginning to do and how folks have started to discover content in the, uh, in the next generation world of pay TV. And uh, it's another similar to personalization where just a standard recommendations carousel isn't going to do it right. It, just having a voice to text search option um, also isn't going to cut it. And when we say conversational voice search, we mean being able to literally have a conversation with, with your TV or with your smartphone or whatever it is and say, what's on TV tonight? Well, what about comedies? Well, what about comedies at this time or involving this certain actor or asking a question like, what's that movie with Tom Hanks and the volleyball and then Castaway pops up, you know, stuff like that. It's, it's taking it to the next level. Um, and uh, there are a lot of folks around the world that TiVo um, certainly is, is one that's leading the charge as far as uh, refining and advancing our conversational voice search platform, both as a part of our end to end user experience and then as a standalone product itself. But yeah, it's becoming very important. Folks are, are asking for that. Yes. Okay, and I mean we've we've spent quite a few years talking about agility in the pay TV space as well, uh, in terms of sort of you know allowing operators to launch services more quickly and then update them more regularly. I mean, what can you do to sort of help them achieve that objective? Yeah, so Ed, you know, as we had mentioned earlier, having it be taking it off of the the premises of the operator and where it is so hardware focused and, and you have to advance features based on the limitations of whatever hardware you have installed and software, of course, along with it and putting it into the cloud where you have um, a federated model, right? Where, for example, TiVo's model is that we have a, a federated cloud-based service uh, in AWS. And then each of our operators has a unique instance of that service where we have uh, unique customized UI, UX branding, localization, depending on which region of the world that they're in, custom sets of business rules, depending on the content rights and advanced features such as network or cloud DVR, Soku, um, which, which channels and programs have those rights. That's all very customized and unique to the operator itself. However, it's a part of a, a robust cloud-based um, environment that allows for us for each of the core products that we have, the managed Android TV platform, the unmanaged streamers, mobile, web, for us to be able to have individualized roadmaps for each of those at the federated level and then cascade updates down to the operators and make it much, much easier for folks to uh, advance the, uh, their platforms in, in terms of core feature sets and, and that type of thing on top of the, the standard maintenance releases and bug fixes and all that stuff that tends to be very cumbersome uh, in a, on-premise managed environment, um, taking it out to the cloud and having it be a part of a federated model certainly introduces some efficiencies there. There's no question about it. Yeah, so this is fully hosted as well? Yes, yeah, yeah. Okay. the user experience, yes, yeah. So is this model 
just about agility or can you also reduce operating costs? Yeah, there's definitely some cost savings involved here. If you think about uh, the back end and, and being able to be more agile in terms of advancing the platform, in terms of scaling the platform. So as you put more subscribers on, being that it's a hosted UX environment, it allows for scalability that your on-premise uh, environment will not. You know, inevitably, there's you're going to hit walls there in terms of licenses, in terms of infrastructure that needs to continue to be expanded on, um, and time spent to again advance the features and functionalities. Whereas in a cloud-based environment, allowing for that managed experience to and and uh, somebody like TiVo, for example, uh, to be able to to advance our own roadmap and have you as the operator and your customers be able to take advantage of the federated uh, instance and, and the roadmap a part of that service is certainly going to introduce some efficiencies, but it's also on, on the operational end and, and commercially speaking, the model to, for example, acquire a customer in the cloud hosted IPTV world is, is much more lucrative, um, versus the legacy pay TV world, particularly on the Linux side, uh, where the equipment is yes, getting less expensive, but the cost to it to install a customer on top of purchase the equipment, the CP or set top boxes for the customer and install in the home can be very uh, robust and cumbersome and time consuming in the legacy pay TV world. In the next gen or cloud hosted world, you're talking about uh, devices that are either application based or if it's a managed experience like managed Android TV, um, it's Wi-Fi enabled uh, and uh, and so installation for the technician is seamless um, the overall cost of the of the home is reduced and it actually one of the big initiatives that we've been focused on is the fact that it introduces uh, quite a bit of operational efficiency in, in installation labor because it um, um, you know we're able to drop ship those boxes and have the customers just turn them on themselves yeah and that's always been one of the really big costs the actual uh, the truck rolls hasn't it and i mean could you support me if i want to go all ip because i know obviously you can support the broadcast side we've talked about apps on boarding but if i wanted to go all ip and nothing else now can that be supported on the platform yeah absolutely so our next gen platform is focused in on on the all ip video delivery world um and we recognize that operators are going to be at different phases of that game i think that that's it's a chartered path that that most are are going down, even if it's just uh, second screen currently right now, introducing unmanaged streamers in a world where they're still principally uh, delivering video over Qualm and at a Doxis network. Um, but moving to IP is 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 where is where the industry is shifting, and that's what we're prepared to do to help, whether it be a complete shift right away to all IP video delivery, or whether it be stair step model where folks are starting to introduce. Um, hybrid IP qualm channel lineups. Um, uh, yeah, what, whatever the case may be, we certainly appreciate that there are scenarios, but the end goal is IP. Yeah. yeah. Okay. I mean, just finally, I mean, for some operators now, video is not actually their major profit engine, although we know it's the sort of cement that keeps the sort of the triple play and the quad play together. But I mean, in terms of actually monetizing the video part of my service, I mean, what can you do to help operators? Yeah, so we've, that's something that we've been very focused on in TiVo. We certainly recognize that the video, uh, having a video platform, an existing video platform, just to maintain and operate it is, is, can be cumbersome, um, you know, let alone looking to uh, invest into the core components of it, whether it be the UX or uh, a robust, more uh, next generation or advanced uh, backend uh, CDN origin, uh, that, that type of thing. Um, we certainly know that there, that there are a lot of dollars involved and, and the margin within the video product portfolio on its own kind of is, is one that is uh, that folks are, are desperately trying to either maintain and or grow if they're so lucky, but it's, it's certainly cumbersome. So TiVo actually what we've done is we, we have an entire group that's dedicated just to monetization where we recognize that there needs to be other um, opportunities for uh, customers to be able to monetize their video platform and to, and to bring in extra dollars to contribute to uh, to what the video portfolio is is in turn contributing to the rest of the organization. So um, notion of uh, you know one uh, something like sponsor discovery where you're um, where we're actually leveraging the carousels that are built within the personalized recommendation engine and the discovery engine that we're providing in our UX and we're reserving real estate in those carousels to be able to promote high value content that content providers are going to want to pay both us and the operator in turn in a revenue share model to be able to uh, um, have that content surface. We also have 
you know, capabilities of uh, doing messaging and we're working on advancing our platform to where there's an interactive option for somebody watching TV to be able to upgrade their package right away or to add a premium channel or to purchase an event or something like that, just through messaging, uh, you know, very non-invasive messaging in the, in the user experience. Um, but, it, you know, we, there, there are a lot of different ways in which we can continue to contribute um, and, and help operators continue to contribute to the margin uh, of the video product portfolio. And yeah, we're very focused in doing that. Yeah, and the content promotions are a win-win because you also keep people on the platform for longer. So yeah, exactly. Yeah, and it's all based on again that robust recommendations engine. So the content that we're surfacing isn't just rogue content. You know, it's based on what the user is is has a propensity to watch or view, um, and being able to leverage content accordingly um, in a monetizable fashion, uh, which is a win-win for the operator and the customer. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Well, it's it's. Great stuff. And uh, thanks very much for talking about it, Patrick. And it's great to see you again. Thank you. Good to see you too. Appreciate you having me.